Hey everybody, welcome back to school. Um, so, just like we mentioned in the email, we're going to be doing online lectures for a bit. So hopefully everybody out there stay healthy and don't, you know, get too close to people and wash your hands. Anyway, um, the first thing I'm going to do is cover the word problems, which I didn't get to in the last exam. Uh, the good part is I'm going to focus on the word problems when I get to them. And I'm not really going to focus on all the nine steps since we were already tested over that. So anyway, what I do want to do, though, is I want to start on page 34 of your module two notes. Right? Remember that we're still in the module two notes. All right? And so I want to start on page 34. I want to do these examples and then I'll go to the word problems. And when we do the word problems, we'll go ahead and use the calculator a little more. Anyway, so I have uh, one minus, or sorry, I have this matrix, and I want to go ahead and try to solve it. So remember that we always have a goal when we're trying to do these. And your goal is to get it to make it look like this. One, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one and it doesn't matter what the numbers at the end are. So that's your goal, all right? Um, usually what we're gonna do is you pick, you go row by row, and I'll be more lenient than I was last time since the exam for that's over, but we're gonna go row by row. We do this row, this row, and I don't have another color, but uh, whatever. And then the last row, and you go down, I'm saying row, but I mean column. My apologies. So we go down each column and you turn the number into whatever the goal is. So the one is already a one, so you leave it alone. I want to change the negative two to a zero. Then I want to change this one to a zero. Okay, so our first goal here is I want to change this negative two into a zero. And in order to change numbers to zeros, you have to add the opposite number. So I'm in column one, so I'm going to use row one to change it. If I was in column two, I'd use row two. If I was in column three, I'd use row three. So since I'm in column one, the opposite of negative two is two, so it's going to be two times row one plus row two, and that's going to give me my new row two. Okay, so to avoid calculator issues, I'm just going to do the whole thing by hand. Um, but if you know how to use the app, then you can go ahead and just use it. But since people are um, restricted from going to campus, um, if you delete it, I don't want those people to be at a disadvantage. So I'm doing everything by hand. So 2 row 1 is just twice of what row 1 is. So that's going to be 2, negative 8. 14 and 28, and then row 2 is negative 2, 9, negative 16, and negative 31. And I can go ahead and add those up. And just so I don't have to waste time with mental math, I already have the answers. So we get 0, not that it's hard, but 1, negative 2, negative 3. So my new augmented matrix is going to be the original row one, the new row two, and then I have my row three. One, negative seven, 13, 23. Okay. Now our goal is to change this one to a zero. And again, I'm still in column one. So I'm still going to use row 1 to change it. So the opposite of 1 is negative 1. So negative row 1 plus row 3 gives me my new row 3. And I can write it out. Negative row 1 is negative 1, 4, negative 7, negative 14. And I'm going to add that to row 3. 1, negative 7, 13, and 23. When I add those up, I get 0, 
negative 3, 6, and 9. And so that's my new row 3. And so notice we have an interesting development. So now we go to the next step. Now we're done with notice that column one is completely finished. So now I move on to column two. And again, it's up to you which ones you want to get rid of. Um, notice that the middle is already a one, so I'm good there. I can change the top to a zero, or I can change the bottom one to a zero. So just for more dramatic effect, I'm going to change this bottom one to a zero. Usually that's the order you go. If you did the one on top on the exam, I didn't count it off because technically it's still correct. Okay, so now I'm in column two. So now I'm going to use row two to change it. So the opposite of negative three is positive three. Three row two plus row three becomes my new row three. So three row two is just zero, three, uh, negative six, three times three is negative nine, and row three, row three is zero, negative three, positive six, and nine. Add them up. Notice that everything cancels out, all zeros. So my matrix is one, negative four, seven, 14, zero, one, negative two, negative three, zero, 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 zero. All right, so now the last step is gonna to be to take care of this negative four up here. And again, I'm in column two, so I'm gonna use row two to kill it. So the opposite of negative four is positive four. So four row two plus row one is gonna give me my new row one. So four times row two is zero, four, negative eight, negative 12. And then row one, sorry, my hand's right in the way of the note, so I have to keep picking up my hand every time I wanna look at the matrix. Um, but anyway, we have one, negative four, uh, seven, and 14. So we add those up and we get 1, 0, negative 8 plus 7 is negative 1, and negative 12 plus 14 is positive 2. So I have 1, negative 4, 7, 14. Uh, this is, oh, what am I doing? Sorry. My phone distracted me. Can't multitask when you're doing a live lecture. All right, 0, 1, negative 2, negative 3, 0, 0, 0, 0. So there we go. So we can see from the last row that we have infinite solutions. But just because there's infinite solutions doesn't mean that the answer can be literally anything. It just means that there's an infinite number of them. So what we do is we rewrite each row. Row 1 told me that x minus z is equal to 2. And row 2 tells me that y minus 2z is equal to negative 3. All you do is you solve for the x and the y. So x is equal to z plus 2. y is equal to 2z minus 3. And there you go. That's going to be your solution. Your solution is z plus 2 for x, 2z minus 3 for y, and z is your final variable. What it's saying is that there's only one variable that can be anything, and that's z. If z is anything, then y has to be whatever that is, twice that, minus 3, and the x value has to be whatever it is, plus 2. All right, so that's one example. Let's do the next one. So the next one, number 35, is we have this matrix with two rows. 
So whenever it's not a three by four matrix, in this case, I'm gonna put zero, 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 zero. Technically, that means there's a row of all zeros on the bottom. They just don't put it. All right. So if I look at this, my first step is going to be I want to do a row swap. Remember, my goal is to get this, or to attempt to get this matrix. Now, I put zero on the bottom because I already know my last row is zeros. That's not going to change. So I kept that the same. So my goal is to get that matrix. Okay, so my first step is to get a one, which I already have my one right there. So w instead of doing math to make it happen, I'm just gonna swap the rows. So row one is gonna swap with row two. And that one's pretty easy. So I get one, negative three, four, six, three, negative eight, 18, 15, and then all zeros. All right, now that I have that, my next step is to get rid of this one. I'm in column one, so I'm gonna use row one to get it done. The opposite of three is a negative three. Negative three row one plus row two is gonna be my new row two. So negative three row one, is negative three, nine, uh, negative 12, six times negative 18. Row two is three, negative eight, 18, 15. I can add those up. I get zero, nine minus eight is one, 12, negative 12 plus 18 is six, negative 18 plus 15 is negative three. All right, let me get my notes, make sure I don't make a silly mistake. So anyway, we have our matrix. I re rewrite it out. So 1, negative 3, 4, 6, 0, 1, 6, negative 3, and then 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay, notice that the middle part's done. In order to make it look like our goal, we have to go for that one up top and turn it into a zero. So I wanna make that into a zero. So the opposite of negative three, oh, I'm in column two. So since I'm in column two, I'm gonna use row two to change it. The opposite of negative three is positive three. So three row two plus row one is gonna give me my new row one. And when I do that, I have three row two is 0, 3, 18, negative 9. And I have 1, negative 3, 4, 6. Add them up. 1, 0, 18, 22. Negative 9 plus 6 is negative 3. So I get 1, 0, 22, negative 3, 0, 1, 6, negative 3, 0, 0, 0, 0. All right. So there we go. That's my answer. Notice that when we did this, because there was only, because there was an empty row, it was impossible to get these to be zeros. But we did what we could. We got the 1, 0, 0, 1 up in the upper left corner. All right. So again, we have infinite solutions. And so I have x plus 22z equals negative 3. The other row tells me that y plus 6z is equal to negative 3. And that gives me my two solutions. So all I got to do is subtract this to the other side and get that to the other side. So my answer is gonna be negative 22z minus three, negative 6z minus three, and z. All right, so on your homework, 
um, there's going to be examples that are just like this. They're problems that don't give you an exact answer. They're either going to be infinite solutions or no solution. And in that case, you walk through them, just like you were doing it on the exam, and you can see that things will cancel, and you work it out. So we'll do one more, and then we'll go to the word problems. So on page 36, notice here that there's only two steps. That means that good things are going to happen. You won't know that when you're actually doing it, but for the sake of this assignment. So notice that we already have a 1 in the upper corner. So our next task is to get this negative 1 and make that a 0. Okay, we're in column 1, so we're going to use row 1. And they're already opposites. 1 is the opposite of negative 1. So that means that row 1 plus row 2 is just going to be my new row 2. So 1, 2, 3, 6 is going to be added to negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and negative 6. And just as you'd expect, you get all zeros. So I have 1, 2, 3, 6, 0, 0, 0, 0, 2, 4, 6, 12. Okay, step two, same thing. I want to turn this guy into a zero. I'm still in column one, so I'm going to use row one. The opposite of two is negative two. So it's going to be negative two row one plus row three. Gives me my new row three. And we do the math. Notice that this becomes negative two, negative four, negative six, negative 12. Two, four, six, 12. Add them up. And again, another row of all zeros. So I have one, two, three, six, all zeros in the second row, and all zeros in the last row. So in this case, there's still infinite solutions. But there's only one equation, and that equation is the first row x plus 2y plus 3z is equal to 6. So what we do is we solve by moving these variables to the other side. x is negative 2y minus 3z plus 6. And that's your answer. And here, y can be anything and z can be anything. So in the previous two examples, the only free variable, meaning that it could be whatever it wanted to be, was z. x and y had no choice but to follow an equation. But in this third example, y and z can be anything, and x has to follow an equation. All right, so you're going to see those examples on the homework. Now what I want to do is do some word problems. All right. So Sylvia, so I'm going way back to page 28 of the module two notes. This is way back in section 6.1. All right. Sylvia invested a total of 40,000 bucks and she invested part of her money in her certificate of deposit that earns 2%, a uh, stock that earns 8% and a bond that earns 5%. She invested twice as much in the stock as she did in the CD under a total of $2,300 at the end of one year. How much principal did she put in each investment? All right. So for this word problem, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the variables. And the variables basically are the how much principal. Because that's what I'm looking for, my unknowns. So in this case, I'm going to go by x is going to be the amount invested in the CD. Apologize for my handwriting. Let me zoom in. Ah, there we go. Let me rewrite this. So the amount invested in the CD, we have Y. Y is going to be, so we have the amount invested in the CD. 
the amount invested in stock. And then we have Z, which is the amount invested in uh, the bond. Okay. So we want to come up with an equation for it. The first equation is just this simple statement. Sylvia invested $40,000. That means that the amount invested in each one, the certificate of deposit, the stocks and the bonds has to add up to 40,000. So my first equation is just the total amount invested. And in this case, it's just gonna be X plus Y plus Z, and that's gonna be equal to 40,000. So next we're gonna move to Second part, she noticed that it says 2% simple interest for X, 8% simple interest for Y, 5% simple interest for Z. And so again, we know it's gonna be linear because it's a linear problem. I mean, the whole example, everything we've been doing has been linear, but I wanna show you why. So simple interest. is the formula I equals P times R times T, where P is the amount invested, R is the rate as a decimal, and then T is the time in years. Okay, so that's a formula. And if we work this out, we notice that all of these were for one year. So I know that T is gonna be one. I'm gonna kind of ignore this unsolved part for now because I'm gonna write, need to write down stuff. Um, so the interest for X for the CD is gonna be the interest is P, the amount invested, well, the amount invested is just the variable x. So that's just x times the rate, 2%, 0.02, times 1. The stock, the amount invested is y times 0.08, times 1. And then the bonds, the amount invested is Z times 0.05 times one. And so now I can create another equation for the total invested, not total invested, sorry, total interest earned. And that equation, I just use what I have up there. So 0.02X, And a lot of people would have stumbled upon this equation. I just really want to show you why it is what it is. Plus 0.08y plus 0.05z. And they, she told us that she makes $2,300 in interest. So that's going to be 2300 All right. Now the last equation is the special restriction. She invested twice as much in the stock as she did in the CD. So that's gonna be the last equation. Twice as much stock as a CD. And so for this last equation, we have to be very careful when you write it. Um, when they say twice as much stock, that means that the stock is going to be the bigger equation. Okay, so the stock is, you look up, that's y, 
let me write them down here. The CD is X. So the bigger number is Y. So the stock is equal to twice the CD. And so that's the last equation. I'll write it in black so it matches the others. So there we go. Now my aug unsolved augmented matrix is, I just work it out. The first row is 1, 1, 1, 40,000. Then 0 0.02, 0 0.08. 0.05, 2,300. And then this last equation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this 2x, or if you want, you can get the y. It, does, it doesn't matter. I'm going to get the 2x and move it to the other side. So by doing that, the 2x becomes a negative 2x. So negative 2, 1. There's no z's, and the answer is going to be 0. So that's my unsolved matrix. And so there you go. Uh, the first problem on this exam, this next exam that's going to be in like four weeks, three, four weeks, is going to be one of these problems. And I'm not testing your ability to do the whole row operation thing. Notice that there's nine steps because we already did that. That was exam two. So for this section, I'm going to be OK with you using the calculator to solve it. So I'm going to go, let me bring up my calculator. Calculator. All right. So if you have your calculator, you can get your calculator to solve it by going to second matrix. And then I'm going to go to the edit menu. And under edit, I'm going to hit enter. And I'm going to erase it because normally people won't have stuff in there. That's not what I wanted. All right. So we our matrix is three rows by four columns. So that's what I wanted you to write. Three by four. And if you're if you didn't have anything before, there's going to be a lot of zeros. But anyway, I'm going to type this in. One, enter. One, enter. One, enter. 40,000, 0 0.02, 0 0.08, 0 0.05, and then 2,300. And then the last one, when you do the negative sign, be sure that you use the minus button. No, I mean, <laughs> you use the negative button, not the minus, or else you get an error. So the, below the 3 is the negative button. So negative 2, 1, and then 0, 0. So we have our matrix. I can kind of go through it and make sure that I typed it in correctly. Let me make it bigger. Yep, 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 yep. And so we leave the menu. I'm going to go press second and then mode. And that leaves the menu. Now I go back to it, second matrix. I go to the math menu. And there's all these cool programs that you can use. And I'm going to do a RREF. RREF converts your matrix into a reduced row echelon form. Basically, it does the nine steps. And now I need to put the matrix in there. So second matrix one more time. And there's your matrix. It's matrix A. So I'm just going to hit Enter. And there you go. So again, we kind of skipped all the blah, blah, blah. But when you solved it, I get 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 10,000, 20,000, 10,000. There we go. So now let's answer the question. This is the part that people hate. So she invested $10,000 
in the CD, and you can abbreviate, 20,000 in the stock, and then 10,000 in the bond. And so that's your answer. If you forget to put that, you're going to get points off because you have to actually answer the question. All right. So again, on your homework, I'm going to put like three of these. And I'm focused not really on your doing the row ops for it. I'm focused on your ability to read the word problem and to set it up. Okay. So that's pretty much all of it. This, the solving part, basically this on the calculator, is only like one point of the entire problem. Okay, so you have to know how to read it and properly set it up. So to give you practice with that, I'm going to let you do page 30 on your own. Um, I'm going to include a link underneath this one that has it worked out. So work it out by yourself. Pretend like you're taking a test. And then when you think when you got it done, you can view it in Canvas and see how you did. All right. That being said, let's jump all the way over here and let's look at this problem. Now I'm on page 37 of the notes. My apologies for hopping around all over the place. So this one's kind of happy. An accountant checks their earnings and notice that the matrix is already created for us. This is kind of nice. Just bam, there it is. So let X, Y, and Z represent the cost for sales. And so if I look at each equation, the first night is 80x plus 400y plus 480z is equal to 9,280. Then I have 50x plus 350y plus 400z is equal to 7,800. And then 75x plus 525y plus 600z is equal to 10,500. Now notice the hint I gave you. Divide each linear equation by an appropriate constant so that the numbers won't be so huge. What I mean by that is this first equation, and I have my notes in front of me to save time. I thought I did. There they are. Okay. So this first one I can divide by 80. This one, I can divide everything by 50. And this one, I can divide everything by 75. So if I divide the first row by 80, I get x plus 5y plus 6z equals 116. Then I have x plus 7y plus 8z equals 156. And then x plus 7y plus 8z is equal to 140. So what do you notice about this problem, or what's going to happen? So the augmented matrix that we get is 1, 5, 6, 116, 1, 7, 8, 156, and then 1, 7, 8, 140. Well, the, the dilemma here is, notice that these two, right here and right here, are exactly the same. But then why do we get two different answers? Okay, so because of that, we have no solution. So just by looking at it, I can already tell there's no solution. But I'm going to type this up in the calculator. Um, when you're doing your take or your lab, you're going to have to do the, the steps to get the answer, OK? So there's no RFing in your lab that you train in. But anyway, so I go to second matrix, edit, and I just change the matrix. So this is 1, 5, 6, 1, 16, 1, 7, 8, 156, 178, 140. All right. 
What's cool is the last thing I typed in this calculator was um, the RF. So I'm just going to do second enter, and it recalls the last thing I typed in. Okay, and so we solve it. And again, on your lab, you would do all the row ops. But when you're done, you get the matrix. 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. And again, looking at that, that tells me that there's no solution. Okay, so the very last thing says, explain why the auditor knows that there was an error in the record keeping. Because basically, there's no solution. What they mean by no solution, you have to elaborate on that. There is no combination. of prices that can account for the total revenue. Okay. So that's that problem. So now we got one more, and then we are done. So this last problem, I like this one. The math department at Collin College wants to buy new blue and red dry erase markers. Three different packages are available to purchase. Package A contains 30 blue and 16 red. B, 21 blue, 14 red. C, 3 blue, 10 red. They want to purchase exactly 25 packages and need exactly, so we know the amount of markers. How many of each package should they purchase? So, this one I'm going to go ahead and do it all the way. Because to give more practice with the row ops, there's not that many row ops. But anyway, we can look at the first sentence and we can see that, or not the first sentence, but the easiest thing to decipher 25 total packages. So that means what are, we, what are the unknown? The unknown is packages. Yeah. So that's my unknown. So that means my x is going to be amount of package A y is going to be the amount of package Z And Z is going to be the amount of package C. So reading through this, for our equations, we have the first equation, which is the total number of packages. And that's just going to be X plus Y plus C. is equal to 25. Okay, the next one's going to be the total blue. And then the last equation is going to be the total red. All right, so the total number of blue markers, if we, and you kind of have to go piece by piece here. So package A, contains 30 blue, I'll just use blue, 30 blue, package B, 21 blue, package C, 3 blue. So that's going to be 3x plus 21y plus 3z. What did I say 3x? 30x plus 21 plus 3z. And then they told us the total number of blue markers. So that should be equal to 615. For the red, we have 16 red, 14 red, 10 red, adds up to 370. So 16x plus 14y plus 10z is equal to 370. So my augmented matrix for this 
is going to be going down each column 1, 30, 16, 1, 21, 14, 1, 3, 10, 25, 6, 15, 370. Okay, so to give you practice with the uh, lab, let's go ahead and do the steps to do it. We already know our first one's already a 1, so that's taken care of. Now I want to turn this into a 0. We're in column 1, so I'm going to use row 1. Negative 30 row 1 plus row 2 gives me my new row 2. So the numbers are a little bit bigger, but that gives me negative 30, negative 30, negative 30, and I have no idea what that is, but luckily I have my phone with me. So 25 times 30. Negative 750, and then 30, 21, 3, 615, add them up, 0, so negative 30 plus 21 is negative 9, negative 30 plus 3, negative 27, 750 minus 16, but then make it negative is negative 105. All right, so I got 1, 1, 1, 25, 0, negative 9, negative 27, negative 105. And then the last row stays the same, 16, 14, 10, 370. All right, step two. I want to change this one into a zero. So for this, I'm going to do the opposite again. So neg uh, I'm in column one, so I use row one. Negative 16 row one plus row three. Can you give me my new row three? All right, so I got negative 16. Negative 16, negative 16. Negative uh, 16 times 25. Get my phone up and running. That's negative 400. And then 16, 14, 10, 370. So we add those up. 0, negative 2, negative 6. And then negative 400, that's negative 30. All right. 1, 1, 1, 25. 0, negative 9, negative 27, negative 105. 0, negative 2, negative 6, negative 30. We go to step 4. I want to change that into a 1. And so I just do the reciprocal. Negative one ninth row two gives me my new row two. So this one's pretty easy. So I have a zero, one, three, and then that fits into so 105 divided by 9. 11.6. Repeating. I need to go get a calculator real quick. I wonder if I can pause this thing. This is my first time using it. Let's find out. All right. And actually, with that, I found a mistake that I made. Erg. This is 135. My bad. One little mistake kind of ruins everything, which means that that is a 35. Okay, the other row is still correct. And so now this actually makes sense when I work it out. So multiply by 1 ninth, 135 divided by 9, 15. Okay, and then we have 0, negative 2, negative 6, negative 30. Let me make sure I did. Yeah. 
Right now, the last step is I want to get rid of this one. I'm in column two, so I'm going to use row two to do it. So that's going to be two row two plus row three gives me my new row three. So two row two is just zero, two, six, thirty. Row three, notice it's just everything's the opposite. So zero, 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 zero. So my final matrix I say final, but there's one more step. <laughs> and I should have put that in here. So the last step is to change that one into a zero. I'm still in column two, so I'm gonna use row two. So let's go ahead and add a step five here. And that's gonna be negative row two plus row one gives me my new row one. So negative row two is zero, negative one, negative 3, negative 15, row 1, 1, 1, 1, 25. Add them up. 1, 0, negative 2, negative 15 plus 25 is 10. There you go. So I have 1, 0, negative 2, 10. Oh. Uh, 0, 1, 3, 15, and then all zeros. So notice that we have infinite solutions, but this is different. I'm going to go through and I'm going to solve it just like we did the last one. So for my solutions, notice that row 1 gave me x minus 2z is equal to 10. Row 2 gives me y plus 3z is equal to 15. And I can easily take these two things, move them to the other side, and I have my solution. I'm going to put this in quotes. And so my solution is negative 2z plus 10. Negative 2z. Oh, my God. Sorry, when you add it over, it becomes positive. You know what? I won't be lazy. Let me actually do it. Or else I'm going to be inviting bad manners on y'all's part. We can solve this. So x equals 2z plus 10. y equals negative 3z plus 15. And there you go. So my solution, which again I put in quotes, so I'll explain in a bit, is 2z plus 10 negative 3z plus 15 and z. Okay, so if this was just a generic math problem, then that would be correct and you'd be done. But we have to remember what x, y, and z are. X, Y, and Z are physical objects. Okay. So let me go ahead and add a page here. I need to pause it real quick. Okay. Sorry about that. So I just gave myself more room down here. So when we're dealing with physical objects, There's some, you know, generic ideas about them. First of all, if they were physical objects, they can't be negative. You can't have, I mean, this isn't like in terms of debt or something. You can't have a negative amount of a physical object. Okay. And then remember that in these problems, these are boxes.
Also, they can't be fractions. They must be whole numbers. I can't have 1.5 It's either one or it's two. There's nothing in between. So you can't have a fractional part of a box. So with that in mind, I want to go back to my answer. Okay, and let's look at it. What's the smallest? Uh, let me rewrite it. Okay, so I'm going to start with Z. Now, the smallest possible value that there can be for Z, it can't be negative, it has to be a whole number, is zero. And that's the smallest possible. Okay, now if it's zero, automatically I know what the other two are. I just plug in zero. There has to be 15 of this. If I plug in zero, there has to be 10 of that. There can't be fractional amounts, so the next amount is going to be one. I plug it into each one. 15 minus three is 12. Um, 10 plus two is 12. So that's another possible answer. Then I can have two. If I have if z is two, I subtract another three. I add another 2. Z could be 3. I subtract again, add again. All I'm doing is I'm plugging it into each equation. Now Z can be 4. It's 3. That goes up again. Z can be 5. So this becomes zero, and this becomes 20. And now we stop there, because notice that the y value, the middle number, becomes zero. If I were to make another value, this would be negative three and 22, but you can't have a negative solution. So in the case of physical objects, even though there's infinite numbers if you include negatives and decimals, if you're only looking at whole numbers, we only have six possible solutions. There's a problem very, 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 very similar to this on your take home, not your take home, your lab five. OK, so please look at everything I did. And the good thing about videos is that you can rewind and kind of look at it. But it's going to make you do a problem just like this. You work it out. You're going to do all of the Gauss-Jordan stuff. And you're going to get infinite solutions. But with those infinite solutions, it's not really infinite because you're dealing with physical objects. So you do the exact same thing here, and you list the possible answers that there could be. So to finish it off, you can have... Ten of A, fifteen of B, no C. You could have twelve of A, twelve of B, and then one C. And you just kind of keep on with that pattern. On the lab, it asks you to actually list the solutions. There's not going to be six answers, but that's what you do. All right. Well, that's it. Um, let me know if you have any questions. But I hope you all have a great Tuesday.